The Isle of Wight railways were usually about 30 years behind the times, so when they received their first O2 tank, it was already 32 years old. From the man who designed the famous radial tanks for the London and South Western Railway, the O2s were the immediate replacement for the radials, being built specifically for London commuter trains. 60 of them had been built between 1889 and 95, but when production wrapped up, commuter traffic had increased again, forcing replacement of the O2s with the Drummond dem 7s The O2s were all delegated to more rural areas, including the old Bodmin and Wadebridge Railway, as such, they could have been forgotten about altogether. But in 1923, two of them were sent to the Isle of Wight, and that changed everything. Their compact size, light weight, and surprising power made them perfect for island services. Modifications included the fitting of extended bunkers and air brakes, but by 1949, there were 23 of them working on the island system. They were renumbered to the island's unique sequence, which entailed a W in front of the digits, in keeping with the Southern Railway's regional allocation classification. By 1966, steam on the Isle of Wight had come to an official end, with the 55 and a half mile network being reduced to just eight and a half miles. But what of the O2s? Number W24 Calborn was one of two engines kept to one side for work trains while the island line was being electrified. She was soon purchased by the White Steam Locomotive Group and eventually restored at Haven Street. Since then, she's been the Isle of Wight Steam Railway's flagship, even making some trips to the UK's mainland in the early 21st century. But perhaps the dream for many is the chance to see her again at Ride Pier Head. If only. <laughs>